It's an emanation of other rights. When you read the case, he starts taking you through a laundry list of cases where the U.S. Supreme Court has held over the years that without certain peripheral rights, without certain implicit or penumbral rights, the explicit rights in the Bill of Rights would have no life. You understand what I'm saying? He says, after he gives you all of these cases in his reasoning, where the U.S. Supreme Court has held that the First Amendment or the Fifth Amendment or some amendment uh, made legal what they were talking about, he says, the foregoing cases, his, his reasoning, the foregoing cases that he just listed for you suggest that specific guarantees in the Bill of Rights, the explicit words in the Bill of Rights, have penumbras formed by emanations from those specific guarantees that give those specific guarantees life and substance. Then he says the words for the first time. Various guarantees create zones of privacy. Zones of privacy. Just to give you an example, he says the association of people is not mentioned in the Constitution or the Bill of Rights. The right to educate a child in a school of the parent's choice, not mentioned in the Bill of Rights. Nor is the right to study any particular subject or foreign language. Is that mentioned anywhere in the Bill of Rights? No. He says, yes, the First Amendment has been interpreted, has been construed to include those rights. Now you get it? The right to educate a child in a school of your choice, not mentioned in the First Amendment. But what does the First Amendment say? Uh, but the right of the people peaceably to assemble. Um, um, uh, Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people to assemble. Freedom of speech covers the right to educate your child in a language of your choice, the German language or any other choice. Send them to public or private school, a school of your choice. That speech part of the First Amendment covers that. You understand? Mm -hmm. So you have the specific, explicit right of freedom of speech. Then you have the penumbra right, the implicit right about education. Now, you got it? He says, in other words, uh, let me speak to something else. Okay. The Fourth and Fifth Amendments, he says, were described in Boyd versus United States. Here he is in 1965 using as case law precedent for his reasoning a case from 1868. Boyd versus United States. He goes, he goes back there. He says, hey, look, back in Boyd versus United States, the Fourth and Fifth Amendments were described as protection against all government invasions. Quote, now these words come from Boyd in 1886. Protection against all governmental invasions, quote, of the sanctity of a man's home and the privacies of life, unquote. Those words come from Boyd, 1886. He's pointing to that and saying, doesn't this sound like personal privacy? The Fourth and Fifth Amendment, he says, run into each other, create a zone of privacy. When you take the specific Fourth Amendment right, protection against unreasonable searches and seizures by government, and the Fifth Amendment specific right, that says we, sh we shall not and must not be compelled to incriminate ourselves. When you put those together, out comes a penumbra of privacy. Now you understand, he's a liberal. So he, he's philosophically inclined to read between the lines, to construe, 
to imply. It's not enough for him as a liberal to see the rights as they are listed explicitly because that philosophical conservative viewpoint is very different. The conservative viewpoint is whatever rights that we have individually in a society comes from the specific, explicit, written words in that Bill of Rights. No more, no less. So from a conservative viewpoint, is there a constitutional right to personal privacy? No. Why not? It's not in there. The left, and the lion, speaking for the left, says, when the founding fathers put this beautiful document together, they could not anticipate all the modern ages, you know, problems and, and inventions and technologies and needs. So the liberal left viewpoint that he's given you is, we must adapt that document to our times. And the conservative, to this moment and for always, is wrong. We must adapt our behavior in these times to that document. <laughs> to the opposite viewpoint of the world, huh? You understand why there's so much trouble all the time in debating? It's a fundamental worldview difference. It's how the world works. You either believe that that Bill of Rights and Constitution must be adapted and implied and adjusted to meet our changing needs, or we must conform ourselves and our needs and our behavior to live according to that document. Liberal versus conservative. Democrat versus Republican. Left versus right.